Hello everyone and welcome back to another Blender modeling tutorial. Today we're going to be making a hair dryer inside a blender to help improve your modeling skills or in case you need this particular asset for whatever project you're making. So let's get straight into it. So start off I'm going to press shift and then A on the keyboard. Under mesh I'll select cylinder. Now I'm going to press tab to enter edit mode and 2 on the keyboard to enter edge select mode. I'll press alt left click here on the top. Select this top edge loop or top face and I'll press G and then Z to bring it down, S and then shift Z to scale it on only the X and Y axis and now I'm going to press E and then Z which it should do by default to just bring it up here and probably to around there and then I'm going to press S and shift Z to scale that right down. Now I'm going to press Control R to create some loop cuts and I'm just going to drag this one down to around here. Then I'm just going to press S and shift Z, scale that up quite a fair bit. And I'll create a couple more just to kind of smooth this transition. So I'll press left click to save the loop cut and then S and shift Z, scale it up a tiny bit. Now I'm going to, with that loop cut selected, I'll press shift and then alt left click on these ones. If you click away from any of them, just uh, press alt left click on them and then shift alt left click to select the other ones. Now what I'm going to do is press control B to bevel and that's going to soften these transitions. So if I turn off this overlay, see it looks a bit smoother. I'll come up to my bevel menu here and I'll change this segments to 2 and that should do nicely for now. Now I'm going to press 3 on the keyboard to enter face select mode and I'm going to press alt left click on this one here. Now I'm still in edge select mode, I'm going to press control R to create a loop cut here and I'll create a loop cut here and a loop cut here. Then I'm going to press left click, then I'll press control left click. I'm just going to select these faces here. I'll just go around in the spiral to get them all selected there. Now I'll press I on the keyboard like that. Now I'm going to right click loop tools, which if you don't have, go on to edit preferences and then under add-ons just search loop tools and check the box. On our right click and under loop tools I'll left click circle. I'll then press S to scale that in. Make sure it's in the boundaries there. It's going to create some weird topology at the start. But that's all right. We'll fix that up. Scale it up to around there. I'm going to press S and then Z to scale it along the Z axis a wee bit since it's going to be quite an oval shaped handle I'm making here. Then I'm going to press R and then Y to rotate on the Y axis. G and X to kind of pull it out here. And about there should do nicely. I'll then press I on the keyboard to inset. And I'm now going to press E and just bring it out like this. And I'll press G and then Z to bring it down. And then I'll press S, X, 0. I flatten it off. G and Z will bring it down a little further. In face select mode 3 on the keyboard, I'll press Alt left click here to select this edge loop. And I'll press S and then Shift X. So I scale only on the Z and Y axis. And I'll increase this a little more to around there. Making sure it's still within that inset there. Now what I'm going to do is press Control R and I'll create a loop cut here. G and then Z to kind of bring it down since I'm going to add a sort of bend to my handle here. I'm going to press Control B now and bevel that and that should smoothen things out a little more. Now in face select mode I'm going to left click this face here and then just Control left click and select all these faces here. And now I'm just going to press S scale that down. And I'll press S and Y as well. I should have probably used proportional editing, but I'm just going to do this manually instead. So 2 on the keyboard to enter edge select mode. Alt left click on this edge here. And then just press S. And we're just going to sort of scale these a little more. So Alt left click and then S to scale. Select this one again and I'll turn on proportional editing. Go on the keyboard and just press G and Z. And I'll increase my proportional size just by moving this menu. If you have a mouse you can use the scroll wheel to do this when you're doing the proportional editing itself but I don't have a mouse. Now I just use the touchpad. Now I'll press Control R here and I'll press Shift Alt left click here. I'm just going to press G and Z. Oh I'll turn off my proportional editing and then press G and Z. I'll, left, I'll Alt left click this one here and press Control B and that will bevel that out just to kind of soften things up a wee bit. And this is what we're working with so far. I'm going to go into the keyboard face select mode. Now I'm going to quickly make a button here so all I'm going to do is shift select this and I'll shift select these two as well by pressing shift and left click and I'll press I to inset. Around there should do E and then Z to move it up and now I'm going to press S, Z and 0 to flatten it and then I'll press R and Y to rotate it. Now lastly I'll just press Control R here to create a loop cut and now I'm going to select all my faces here so I'll press so press 3 on the keyboard to enter face select mode left click this one and then I'll just Control left click all these faces until they're all selected G and then Z kind of bring it up 
Now I'll press R and Y, just kind of rotate it a wee bit. Two on the keyboard, Alt left click here. I'll press Control B, just move that out. Tab back into object mode here, and I'm gonna right click and then press Shade Smooth. Under my object data properties, I'm gonna scroll down and turn on Auto Smooth. Now that's looking a lot better. Press tab into edit mode. Free on the keyboard to enter face select. I'm going to select the top face here. Press I to inset. E and then Z to bring it down. And now I'm going to press X and select faces. Then on two on the keyboard, I'll alt left click this one here. Then I'm going to press face and select grid fill. Then I'm going to change my span in this grid fill tab here all the way down to one. I'm going to change my offset try and get it so it's somewhat even to the center line and yeah that should do nicely so an offset of two and a span of two now what i'm going to do is select all these edges individually but to do that all we need to do is shift alt left click here and i'll unselect those edges there and i'll do the same on the other side and there are still a few there so just shift alt left click to deselect all those and now i can press ctrl b I'll go for around there and I'll change my segments from 2 to 1. Now I'm going to press 3 on the keyboard to enter face select mode. And now I'm going to need to zoom in for this. I'm going to select all these faces here. So just every... So I'll press alt left click here and then I'm going to press select and check or deselect. So I'm going to change my offset here to 1 and now you can see it's selecting all the faces I don't want. And I'll just press X and then choose faces. I'll do the same here. Alt left click here to select all these. Select, check or deselect and I'll change my offset to 0. Just so it's selecting all these ones here. And I'll press X and I'll select faces. And now you can see it's created this kind of fan effect. Now in face select mode, free on the keyboard. I'll drag and box select a bunch of these faces here. Try and get them all selected. Don't worry about selecting all this stuff. We're going to deselect it in a moment. Press control and then drag the box to deselect all these. And I'll turn on my x-ray as well. So now I can control left click box select. And I'll unselect all of those there. And I'll get these two at the top as well. Excellent. Now I'll zoom in. Now I'm going to right click separate and I'll choose selection. Press tab back into object mode. I'm going to left click this. Come to my modifier properties. Add modifier. Solidify. Change the thickness up to maybe about 0.3 should do. Now that will look a lot better. To add some thickness for it. I'm going to leave it at that just now. Now with my hair dryer selected again. I'm going to press tab into edit mode. Free on the keyboard and select the space. Press I. Then E to bring it back. Then I'll press X and I'll select faces then i'll press tab back into object mode left click this which is our fan bit and i'm just going to press shift d i'm going to right click set origin origin to geometry then i'll just press g and then z and i'll bring it up and it's a little small and that's all right because all we're going to need to do to fix that is press s and shift z scale on the x and y and i'll get it so it's just starting to overlap with the geometry there so press s and shift z bring it down maybe a little more about there should do nicely. Now we have a ventilator at the back as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and save since I still haven't saved yet. I'll just call this hair dryer. It goes without saying that you should really be saving throughout the scene anyway, but just make sure you've saved. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this here and then I'm going to shift select my hair dryer, control P and an object. Then I'll do the same for this bottom one here. Left click to select it then shift left click to select the hair dryer control p and an object now i'm going to select my hair dryer on its own press r y 90 then g and then z and i'll bring it up tab into edit mode i'm going to press 2 to enter edge select mode alt left click this one here control b to bevel it's looking a little bit jagged tab back into object mode the last thing i'm going to do now is press tab into edit mode and i'm going to with in edge select mode to in keyboard alt left click here and i'll just press shift alt left click select all these as well also press shift left click on these edges just corners of this button here and now i'm going to press ctrl b to bevel i'll increase my segments to two tab back into object mode and now we've got a little bit more of a smoother button there if you do want to make it look nicer you can use a subdivision surface modifier which is just here left click and then subdivision surface however you will need to come in by pressing tab in edit mode, selecting some of these edges and then ch changing the mean crease value to something like 1 or 0.9. 
I'll show you the difference that that's done. So this is before the mean crease and this is after once I set it to one. So you can see the difference there, but that's only really important if you have a subdivision surface. So I'm going to delete it for this video. So I'll just come down to here and just press X and you'll see that none of this is really important now. And I'll press tab back into object mode. I do have other videos where I cover using subdivision surface, but it's not necessary for this one. So I won't go over it. And yeah, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did find it useful, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos like this in the future. Thank you all again and I'll see you in the next video.